big, big, big E. You have already an asset to be in Italian. And you just walk into a, a nightclub in London and you just look Italian and you do, you know, a little bit of a show with your hands and you have this accent, you know, like a little bit of an Italian and you come from Milano and you're lost in London and you don't know what to do, where to go. And you have a map in front of you and said, last is the square, I don't understand, what is this? I'm totally lost and confused, maybe you can give me a help and next thing you know, uh, you know, you are uh, going out with her. What? How do you say? H E, no, I, e, H -E. E, I, K, E. Pardon me? Identity. 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 Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a tongue-tied European trying to grasp the finer points of the English language via a TV teaching course? Well, welcome to the world of BBC English. Follow Me is the most widely followed English teaching course in history. I'm Francis Matthews. My name's Francis Matthews. Look. Francis Matthews. I'm Keith. I'm Jane. I'm Diane. I'm Raymond. I'm Diana. My name's Diana. Look. And now, welcome to Mr. Grease. I'm from Greece. Oh, yes, of course. You're Greek. Yes, I'm Greek. I live in Athens. My home is in Athens. I'm 28 years old, and my name is Stavros Pavlopoulos! Would you say that again, please? I'm Greek. I live in Athens. My home is in Athens. I'm 28 years old. I'm not married. And my name is Stavros Papadopoulos. <laughs> Le rap, ça touche à tout, quoi. Il n'y a pas spécialement un sujet euh, en général, quoi. Bon, Assassin, euh, en France, est connu euh, comme un groupe assez engagé, quoi. Tu vois, au niveau... Euh, ça comprend assez position vis-à-vis -vis de... du système qui nous entoure. Et, euh, parce que, bon, il faut savoir un truc, c'est qu'en France, euh, je ne sais pas l'image que les Anglais ont des Français, mais... Euh, c'est pas tout, c'est pas tout rose, quoi. Tu vois, en ce moment, ils sont vraiment dans une crise. Il y a vraiment une crise en France, quoi. C'est-à-dire que au niveau de... Euh, Par exemple, au niveau des banlieues, ça, ça leur retombe dans la gueule en ce moment parce que euh, c'est le fruit, c'est le fruit du travail qu'il y a depuis euh, depuis 20 ans, euh, tout ce qu'ils ont construit euh, aux alentours de Paris, et voilà, ça leur retombe dans la gueule. Quoi. On va essayer que le système musical en France commence à vraiment s'ouvrir, commencer à amener des productions qui, qui soient quand même assez euh, compétitives au niveau de, 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 ce qui fait, de ce qui se fait en langue anglaise. 
Tu vois ce que je veux dire Que le français, au moins, euh, ça soit reconnu, euh, que ça soit pastille les productions françaises, les mecs, ils les écoutent et ils font « Oh là là, mais c'est quoi cette daube ?» Les lois sont bien ancrées, la 5 République est loin de changer. Les partis se renvoient la balle quand ça commence à chauffer. Dans mon quartier, le 18e arrondissement, mon poids s'y est large, éduqué et comprend. Il paraît que c'est plus facile d'être écouté quand on est blanc. Il paraît que je suis un fils de bonne famille, donc en avant. Car depuis l'âge de 15 ans, je combat et j'abats tous ces fils de pute qui se croient trop beaux quand ils nous voient. La vie est pleine de principes qui a inspiré ça. Je sais que dans mon pays, la religion chrétienne en a l'état. Looks innocent enough, doesn't it? A public car park located somewhere off the A1. But this is no ordinary gathering. These people are counterculturalists, a growing band of discontented Brits who call themselves the PTO, the Patonk terrorist organization, seen here at their secret training camp. Their mission? To fight a European community directive that is set to ban our national game of bowls and replace it with the French version Patonk. Are you prepared to use any means necessary to achieve your aims? Yes, you can coat your bulls with mercury to make them run slower. This happened in France, and uh, somebody from Marseille shot the, the local uh, champion dead, and that was it. So and the French police said, we'll have to clean up bull because it was getting too dirty. They're trying to get us back again, so the next time they come back again, they're going to have us, so they say, but uh, no way. Somewhat distressingly, the PTO operate along similar lines to America's drug pushers, already using children on the front lines of Europe. Yeah, well, we're going to Holland and Sweden this year. But, um, yeah, we travelled a bit. We went to France and Sweden last year to travel. Is Paris still the style capital of Europe? Or is the rest of Europe catching up? French people have a better style than English. It's... I'm sorry, but I find English people always be dirty as hell. Alors j'adore les costumes, j'adore les robes, j'adore les vestes, j'adore les chapeaux, mm. les petits bérets comme celui-ci. Bon, l'Angleterre, je connais moins. Je crois qu'il y a aussi beaucoup de liberté, qu'il y en a sûrement plus qu'à Paris, euh, qu'on a moins peur des limites et euh, moins peur du regard, ou alors si, si on le provoque. Et alors qu'en France, on est peut-être encore un petit peu plus réticent face à ça. On sait que si on s'habille d'une certaine manière, même les shorts cette année qui sont à la mode, c'est pas forcément très facile parce qu'on sait qu'on est regardé en permanence. Peut-être qu'en Angleterre, c'est déjà plus acquis dans les mentalités. J'ai été très longtemps habillé en noir et rouge, des couleurs comme ça, et maintenant j'ai décidé que ce serait vraiment le règne de la couleur. Donc c'est rose, c'est jaune, c'est orange, c'est tout ce qu'on veut. Avant, ils étaient très confinés et Paris, c'était euh, euh, le, le, le top et les autres. Et maintenant, c'est Paris et les autres ensemble. Donc, je trouve ça mieux. Certaines choses, oui, mais dans l'ensemble, je ne trouve pas tellement, euh, pas tellement élégant. Je pense que les Français sont très classiques et libres à la même temps, mais pas autant que les Britanniques. Ici, ils sont plus modernes. En Espagne, nous sommes plus classiques. Ils ont leur propre style et c'est très difficile de copier un style français. French Here they're in sort of, uh, they just a lot in Chevignon, a lot of tweed, a lot of corduroy, a lot of nice shirts, but it's not, it's not particularly young. Je suis très contente, et je suis si contente que j'ai mis mon joli béret. Sorry I'm late. Long way from London to Amsterdam. And it's cobbled streets, you see. Roll the titles. The very first lot, uh, where I think it's 1973. And then there was a three-year gap, and we did some more uh, in 77, winter of 76-7. And then uh, another 13 years go by, yeah. and last year we picked it up again. What, why do you think Van der Volt came back? What, what, what was its strength? Um, a lot to do with um, what you see around you. <clears throat> the, the, I mean, it's a wonderful location, this city. and. Um, there is about the place uh, uh, a sort of uh, an informality, 
um, a laid back uh, willingness to, to um, live and let live, which um, I think you've got to come here to, to realize how ve really very formal we British are mm -hmm. with our uniforms and our saluting each other and um, um, wearing ties and uh, um, you know and carnations with a bit of fern at the back in the buttonhole um, there's not a lot of that here you can't tell from the way someone's dressed whether they're going on a camping holiday or, or they're going to the opera is it difficult playing a Dutch one? What no, sort of not in the least. What sort of characteristics you they're, they're, Having said all that, that we're remarkably similar. <laughs> I mean, uh, the, the Dutch are, are the sort of uh, more relaxed version of, of the British. The other night we went along to a, a club or a venue, if you like, called the Milky Way. It's the sort of venue that you can eat between meals without uh, spoiling your appetite. That keeps us in chocolate bars for a while, that, well that's... Right. It was there we met a great band and uh, very talented musicians. Their names... Shaco. Okay, Walter, play that guitar. This is the joke. It's the 1st of January, 93. And nothing's going to change. There's still going to be passports and 
boring stuff, you know. What about who are the different audiences? I mean, you, you played here today in front of a, well, a mainly German audience. What's the response like as you go from country to country? Do they, does it vary? No, well, it's good, it's good for me in Europe, you know. I mean, I sell a lot of records here. And, um, and generally in the European, con on the mainland, if you like. Um, so it's a different thing. Like, I mean, I've, I've been in Holland and Poland and, you know, Switzerland and generally Northern Europe on this trip. And I've spent a lot of time here. So it's, it is different country to country, just like if you play England, it's different north to south and stuff like that. But, um... What, what about a concert like this? I mean, you're on a bill to, uh, today with, like, Sting. You've got Toto on a bill. You don't get that in the UK unless it's a special event like something that you were involved in. Or it's very seldom seen, is it? Well, the festival still lives uh, in Europe, you know, the idea of the festival, particularly down in Holland and Germany and Denmark to a large extent. Um, and it seems to be accepted. I don't think that uh, it necessarily works very well in England, with the exception of Glastonbury and the Monsters of Rock, I think, where it's a very homogenous bill. Over here, they seem to be able to accept a million different types of bands at one and can understand the difference between them, but they don't become tribal about it. You know, like in England, you owe your allegiance to the rave bands or heavy metal or this type or that type. Over here, you can like... My stuff, or you can like, uh, you know, in excess, or you can like Sting or whatever. It did, you know, it's 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 more Catholic if you like, you know. But anyway, pop music was always um, never marred by borders, you know. I mean, generally, pop music is is a, the lingua franca of the world, anyway, you know. Do you get a chance yourself to listen to sort of other European music other than the UK stuff? That's crap. Really. We've got a guy on today called Eros Ramazzotti. Yeah, shite. Listen to it. Have you? <laughs> well, listen to it. It's on now. Hey, he's on in a minute. Is that it? No, he's on in a minute. Who's it's... that? That's Toto. Oh, dire. <laughs> well, Bob Geldof lives just down the road from us in Faversham, where we come from. Yeah. And uh, we sort of got a message back to him, and he sort of sent a couple of passes through, so we come back. Right, let's see that pass. <laughs> and he gave me that pass. Yeah. Well done. Has he done it before? Yeah, he's got, got another backstage after show pass on it. And we see him at Tunbridge Wells yeah. uh, last year, well, this year. Yeah. And we also see him at um, the Town Country Club. You come from where? Heidelberg. Heidelberg. Yes, big, I, uh, uh, big, big castle of Heidelberg. <laughs> All right. Who are you looking forward to seeing? What? Who do you want to see on stage? Oh, good, good. Was it, was it there? Who do you to see? I want to see Toto and Sting. Oh, I've been here since 10 o'clock this morning. Is that what time you had to get here? 10 o'clock? Waiting for Sting, yeah. yeah. Well done. Still had a fight away in the front, too. How much was it to get in? How much did you pay to get in? Um, 65. 65? Marks. Yeah? Mm -hmm. 65 marks. That's about a thousand pounds to you and me. <laughs> Who's that? Sting! 